Hello and welcome to Living in Tucson, your Tucson real estate connection. And in this episode, I'm going to go over our Airbnb case study update. The good, the bad, the ugly, what we learned and how much money we made. And uh, this was our best month ever. I'm going to go over the numbers and share with you how much money we made in the month of January. Hi, my name's Tyler Ford in Tucson, Arizona with eXp Realty. My wife Mimi and I have been investing in long-term rental properties in Tucson for over 30 30 years. We've never done an Airbnb, but have always been intrigued with the short-term rental model and the income potential. I've represented real estate investors to help them find and buy properties for short-term rentals and have been blown away by the numbers they've shared with me, especially in the summer months that a short-term rental can be profitable in the heat of Tucson during the summer months. In February of 2022, we bought a property that we did a complete demo, remodel, and fully furnished it. We've now been a short-term rental since May of 2022. We have a five-star rating on Airbnb and have earned Superhost on Airbnb. We are documenting the journey and doing a case study to compare a short-term rental versus a long-term rental and what it's like to host on Airbnb, plus share all the things we've learned along the way. Please subscribe to our channel to continue to follow our short-term rental Airbnb journey. Hello, my name's Tyler Ford EXP Realty here in Tucson, Arizona. And uh, about a year ago, my wife and I bought uh, an Airbnb. We've got a lot of long-term rentals, but uh, was always intrigued by the Airbnb model. Had quite a few customers that had bought uh, properties for Airbnb, and uh, we wanted to do one ourselves uh, to see what the numbers look like. And also, we were contemplating turning some of our longer uh, rentals into Airbnbs, and that was the big reason why. Uh, before we did that and did the conversion, just wanted to make sure that it was something uh, that we wanted to get into. And after doing the one that we're doing, we've now decided that our single family homes we're not going to convert over. Uh, for us, it's a special type of property, either a townhome, condo, where there's not a lot of yard, it's easy to turn over. And uh, so for now, we're just gonna stick with what we've got uh, and we've learned a ton. And this, uh, this case study is all about teaching people uh, the process in terms of what we learned and we've learned a ton. Uh, but one of the things, if you've been following the case study, uh, a couple months ago, we had a guest throw a big party and they did some damages. And uh, part of Airbnb, if, uh, if a guest damages the property, uh, you can file a claim, Airbnb then tries to go back and get that money from that guest. If not, their insurance policy kicks in and uh, they will reimburse you for the damages. So long and short of it, it's taken a couple months, but we finally got our reimbursement from Airbnb uh, for $381.37. So uh, that money was uh, transferred into our account and Airbnb did uh, come through with reimbursing us for the cost of the damaged uh, master bedroom door. One of the kids uh, was, was roughhousing in the place during a party and uh, put a hole in the door. But uh, we ended up getting it all fixed and uh, we did get reimbursed. And I know there's been a lot of people curious as to uh, if we were ever gonna get reimbursed. Uh, but the good news is we did, but I encourage you if you wanna go back and uh, watch the, the episode when it happened and uh, the big mistake that we made as a result of uh, the guests that we allowed to stay there but uh, the good news is we got reimbursed one of the big lessons that we've learned uh, over the course of our airbnb in this case study is that we are in the hospitality business uh, you know, at the beginning, I was totally naive about uh, the whole Airbnb thing. Uh, and to be honest, I thought it was going to be uh, a little bit easier than it's turned out to be. And uh, we've learned a lot. Uh, we put in a lot of good systems. And uh, so we now we've got things running really, really well. Uh, and again, it's been a learning curve and uh, I've really dove into trying to understand and be able to maximize our profits. But one of the things, one of the key, key things is reviews. 
And the better your reviews are, the more Airbnb is going to serve up your property because at the end of the day, they want guests to have uh, have a positive stay uh, at your place, which then is a good reflection of Airbnb. So if you're not getting good reviews in the uh, you're going to get pushed down into the Airbnb ranking. So your property is not going to be served up uh, ahead of all others. And I think one of the reasons we're doing really, really well and also maybe better uh, than a lot of other B Airbnbs out there is we're actually getting really, really good reviews. Uh, so uh, about a couple weeks ago, we had a guest stay. And uh, the one thing I like uh, when, when a guest gives a review, they can do it two different ways. So if they're going to give you constructive feedback, sometimes they actually do it in the review where people can see. Um, and I've always commented if it hasn't been, you know, really, really positive, but I really, really like it when somebody gives a review and then there's an area in there where you can send a private message to maybe give uh, a host cons constructive uh, feedback. So anyway, one of our guests stayed, it was like a, they were there for a month and at the end they gave us some really good uh, feedback in terms of some things that we should do. One of which our master bathroom uh, did not have a door. It was just open into the master bedroom. And it was that way when we bought the property. And I didn't really think about it at the time when we did the remodel, we should have put a door on it. Uh, but we've had two guests over the course of the last eight months say it would be nice if there was a door on the master bathroom. So we had it scheduled, but uh, this guest that we had was there for three weeks. So we just didn't have an opportunity. But when they left, they gave us some positive feedback that wasn't in the actual review. One of which is put a door on, which we did. And the other thing was to provide more seating in the patio so people could actually enjoy the patio. We had a nice table outside, uh, but we didn't have chairs where people could actually uh, sit in the backyard and actually enjoy the back patio. So uh, we took those two comments to heart and we actually did those two things. And then the other thing they asked for was uh, a meat thermometer. Didn't really think about that. Uh, on Amazon, they're not all that expensive. So we ended up providing uh, a meat thermometer as well. So again, uh, I really like it when guests give you constructive uh, feedback, but they do it privately and not in the reviews. Uh, so we implemented those two things and uh, put those into place to make our stay better for guests and as a result hopefully get uh, keep up with our really really good five-star review rating if you've been following our case study one of the things that I've been going over is the good the bad the ugly and sometimes uh, there's a little bit of ugly in terms of challenges that you're going to come up against uh, with your Airbnb and uh, this last month uh, had a little ugly that we had to deal with. It was nothing major, but uh, through uh, Turnover b, b we have our main cleaning person that just assigns uh, the cleaning to that person whenever we get a booking. And uh, a couple days prior, she texted me and said, hey, I'm not gonna be able to do your turnover. And the turnover that day happened to be a same day turnover where we had somebody checking out and checking in same day. So I went into turnover b, &B and selected our backup cleaner and uh, told them I would meet him there at 11 o'clock to go over some things. So I showed up at 11 o'clock and uh, 1130 rolled around and they weren't there yet. So I started to get a little bit nervous, uh, started doing the wash in terms of the bedding and the towels and everything just so I could be ahead of the curve and help them out so we could get it turned over same day. Noon rolled around, still not there. So I had to jump in and get everything done. So I ended up doing uh, the turnover myself that day. My wife was out of town. So uh, uh, the cleaning for me is no problem, but uh, you know, I made all the beds and did the towels. And although everything was clean, it didn't look nice and pretty like, uh, like my wife or the cleaning person would have done it. Uh, but at the end of the day, I got it done. And so lesson learned here as a host, you've got to be prepared prepared to jump in and get things done uh, if your cleaning person doesn't show up because at the end of the day like I talked about you're in the you're in the hospitality business and if the place is not cleaned and or ready for the next guest 
uh, you're then jeopardizing not getting a good review or having to compensate them and give some money back. So uh, luckily that didn't happen. We ended up getting a great review, uh, but you just need to be prepared to jump in to get things done because you're it at the end of the day uh, if you're self-managing, which we are. Like I said at the beginning, you know, we've learned a lot over the last eight months or so in doing our Airbnb and actually doing this case study. And uh, at the beginning, I thought it would be a little bit easier and a, and, and a little less time intensive in terms of the passive income. And uh, at the end of the day, you're in the hospitality business. And so you've got to do things right in order to get good reviews, in order to get the bookings and maximize your profits. Uh, so there's a lot to it. Again, a lot more than I thought. You've got access and arrival instructions that you've got to get good at. Um, you've got to have systems in place to be able to do repairs in between your turnovers to get those things done. If anything breaks down or anything e even breaks down while a guest is there, you've got to be on top of it. Uh, you've got questions and answers that you're going to have to deal with uh, in the back end of Airbnb in terms of the, uh, uh, the Q&A and the message uh, that you go back and forth. And you've got to be quick to respond because if you don't respond, then they're off booking with somebody else. So you've got to be on top of your game in terms of providing service and communicating uh, in, a, in a, an effective, quick way. Uh, you've got dynamic pricing that you've got to deal with. Uh, you know, the big mistake that I'm seeing other Airbnb people make, even though we're new, we're super green, I've been on top of the dynamic pricing and uh, it's, it's a moving seasonality thing. And if you keep your pricing static, uh, you're not going to be competitive. So at the beginning, you know, I didn't do this. And since we've gone to dynamic pricing, uh, again, it's made a big, big difference in terms of maximi maximizing our profits and then also pricing it correctly during the low periods uh, from a seasonality standpoint. So getting actually less, but being occupied, which to me is better. Uh, so you got dynamic pricing to deal with. Uh, you've got design, decor, bedding, furniture, amenities. I mean, those things are all really, really important. And uh, so, you know, we did it ourselves. Uh, we did it nice, but we did it clean, simple, you know, a minimalist type of thing. So there's not a lot of clutter, but everything in is nice and it's comfortable. And those are the types of reviews that we're getting. Uh, and then the big thing too is the turnover. Uh, cleaning service and, and, and automating the, the turnover process. And if I can give any advice here, it's automating this part of it, which will make things a lot easier, but you've got to stay on top of them. You've got to make sure they're doing a good job. So even though we've got that automated, you know, we check just to make sure that it's done correctly. Uh, so you got cleaning supplies, you got the cleaning service, and then you've got same day turnovers that you've got to be on top of. Uh, so those are really the, the things that we've learned. And then you've, and then you've got to automate your systems. And um, I've recently learned this where you can do a lot of the communication that is automated. So when certain things happen, messages go out and uh, you automate that process. So again, uh, it's been a been a learning curve and we're now starting to feel pretty comfortable in terms of the automation and the systems that we have in place to effectively run our Airbnb and to be able to maximize our profits and minimize our time. Uh, so uh, if you're looking into an Airbnb, you really want to learn and educate yourself uh, on, those, on those things that I just talked about. Now let's dive on into the numbers. We had our best month yet. Uh, so the numbers that I'm going to go over are for January 2023. And uh, January, February, March uh, are shaping up to be really, really good months where we're going to gross well over $5,000 uh, for each month. So I'm going to dive on into the numbers. Uh, so our gross rental income for uh, January 2023 was $5,198.42. Uh, the month would have been even better. We had somebody stay in January, but that money didn't hit until February. So February is going to be uh, really, really good in terms of the numbers. Uh, so we had dues and subscriptions, $19.99. This is for Price Labs, which is the dynamic pricing that I talked about to allow us to run our Airbnb like a hotel or even the airline business. 
uh, to, to recognize supply and demand, maximize our profits, and then also when seasonality kicks in, to be able to reduce our, our, uh, our monthly in order to be occupied. Uh, so we run, it, we run it like a hotel. And then we had utilities a little bit higher just because it was pretty cold for Tucson, uh, $456.24. Furnishings, we did some upgrades in terms of that furniture in the back that we talked about. We spent $606.55. $606 House cleaning for the month, $231. Uh, and then we had some repair costs. We had the door for the master bath, bed, or master bath that we put in uh, at Lowe's. That was $93.63. And then uh, material supplies and labor to get all that done was $537.19. So total repair cost $630.82 uh, for total expenses of $1,924.61. So our total net income was $3,253.82. And uh, this month, you're not gonna see, like I talked about, go look at uh, last month's uh, case study. I, uh, I sent in our mortgage payment uh, at the end of December, thought it was gonna hit in January. It actually hit at the end of December. So uh, this month, there are no, uh, there's no interest expense, taxes and insurance, because uh, that was paid in the previous month. So again, our total net income for the month was $3,253.82 uh, for the month of January 2023. Now I'm going to break down our utilities, which are our biggest expense outside of our interest expense on our mortgage each and every month. And some are variable, some are fixed. So I'm going to break those down. Uh, we had City of Tucson, which is our water, uh, which was $76.63. And then we had City at uh, TEP, which is our electric bill, 97.63. And then we had Cox, which is our high-speed internet. And then also the cable, we've upgraded it a little bit and paying for higher speed because uh, one of our TVs is wireless. So uh, we got uh, a little bit higher speed to, to handle that so there's not wires and cables running around. So Cox was $254.84. And then Vivint Security, uh, and I've talked about, go look at our previous videos, uh, which is key. It, it, it allows us to uh, have a keyless entry in terms of padlock. Uh, we can manage the thermostat from our phone. We have uh, a, uh, a camera at the door so we can see what's coming in and out. Uh, so if there's any issues going on, we can be on top of it. So uh, uh, the Vivint security that uh, has been huge in terms of uh, some of the systems that we put in place. So total utility costs for the month of January 2023 uh, $456.24. Now I'm going to break down our uh, P&L since uh, June uh, when we started. So June of 2022 to February 2023 to give you an overall look uh, as to our numbers uh, since we started. So our total gross income since we started, 22000 $256.19. Dues and subscriptions. Again, this is Price Lab for dynamic pricing. Uh, we spent $89.95 and we put a lot more money in our pocket as a result. Uh, then total total expenses, and you can look at uh, you can look at uh, this document right here to, to see the breakdown. But total expenses, uh, $13,229.04 for a total net income of $9,027.15. But again, over the course of the next three months, uh, we're gonna be grossing well over $5,000 per month. So in the next three to four months, we'll make more money in the next three to four months uh, than we've made uh, in, the, in our first eight months due to the seasonality of Tucson, the gym show, our weather. Uh, and so there's gonna be periods, you know, if you're running an Airbnb, regardless of where you are uh, within the country, uh, there is some seasonality. So there's gonna be always three to four months where you do really, really well. Uh, there's some months that you're gonna do average and then there's some slower months. So anyway, things are looking good and, uh, 
And uh, again, it's too soon to tell. Part of this is a case study. At the very, very end, analyze you know, the, the net income that we made as a short-term rental versus the net income that we would have made as a long-term rental with less management and uh, less overhead in terms of some of the costs. So again, uh, that's what's going on and that's where we're at. Uh, but the next couple months are shaping up to be really, really good. Hey, thanks for watching our Airbnb case study, especially if you've been following it, the good, the bad, the ugly, and, and how much money we've made. So uh, again, uh, it's too soon to tell, but at the end, we're gonna go over the numbers and uh, compare long-term versus short-term, and then make a decision as to what we're gonna do moving forward. But if uh, you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and comment below. Uh, and if you like this video, do me a huge, huge favor. Give me an internet high five by liking it. And for more awesome videos about living in Tucson, your Tucson Real Estate Connection, you can subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button. And every time that a new video comes out, you're notified. In the meantime, make it a great day.